and welcome to Penang Institute YB, YB Nuriza. YB Nuriza is the uh, the member of Parliament of uh, Matampau. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In one or two points, how does uh, Pakatan Harapan differ from Barisan National Government? Well, you know, we have a long way to, to prove that. I think first and foremost, we have to be a government that is not just concerned about the plight of the citizens. We are also concerned about uh, cleaning up um, excesses, uh, fighting against corruption, mm -hmm. and also concerned about giving space to the opposition. Um, I always say this, the Prime Minister exists with the leader of the opposition, the backbencher members of parliament exists with opposition members of parliament. I mean, it is about having a loyal opposition to king and country. Mm -hmm. So this symbiotic relationship, which was not done by the previous government, which were, you know, who were busy victimizing us for just uh, voicing legitimate dissent. Now that has to be the proof of the pudding. Yeah. Let's talk about uh, Malaysia Baru. Mm -hmm. What does Malaysia Baru mean to you? Well, I think uh, most importantly is the fact that we, um, the government of Pakatan Harapan, could only come to power with the involvement and the participation of 82% of eligible voters who came out on the 9th of May to cast their votes. Hence, I always see Malaysia Baru as a more inclusive, representative form of government, where the era of government knows best is clearly over, and you would need the support of many other stakeholders to make change and reforms work in the short and long term. The narrative, I think, um, that I'm closely associated with is one to initiate reforms. Um, hence, having a clear-cut reform agenda in the political, in the social and economic arena will help us in bring to, to fruit that Malaysia that we want. Now, I come from a, a background where our engagement with the civil society have unearthed Islam as Rahmatan Lil Alamin. Um, a benefit for all mankind. So that's part and parcel of the narrative we're trying to bring because we're trying to build bridges um, between people from different races. Mm -hmm. And I think a more inclusive, a more um, kind of um, optimistic tone, as I mentioned earlier, is something that's useful yeah, yeah, for this yeah. purpose. The reality in Malaysia is we are a government that's heavily dominated by the executive the different branches of um, govern government, whether it's the legislative wing or the judiciary, have always seen, been seen yeah, um, pliable by the executive. Henceforth, the system needs to be reformed to an extent that it provides for different branches to act uh, as uh, proper checks against possible transgressions of the other. So I think that's how you're empowered, right? Because citizens can rightly use the legislative um, forum, the parliament, to check against yeah. the executive. So you can't have both executive and legislative being controlled by the same party or by the same bunch. The cabinet to have complete authority over everything, that's not going to work out. So I like to see how uh, the US Congress works. For example, the different select committees are always feared yeah, yeah. by the executive, right? So imagine if we move towards that end, citizens will be more empowered because they will have different channels uh, in order to communicate their message and demands. How do you uh, position race and religion in this new political setting? You know, I will say this, everything has to be done, um, you know, very, very, uh, you know, uh, in, in, in a very gradual phase because you want to definitely have a principal approach over many things, over change, but at the same time you also want to guide um, maybe the Malay majority, the Wimputra majority from the rural hinterland to be part of the process. So sometimes, you know, it's important to decide and uh, govern based on principles, but by the same token, you know, we can't just expect without any proper and effective communication 
that people will buy into our arguments and principles. So it has to be a consistent communicating effort to win them over. It's always about winning hearts and minds and always understanding and placing yourself in the other person's shoes. Speaking as the daughter of Anwar Ibrahim, uh, what would have been, I mean, what kind of Malaysia would have been, you know, without, if Anwar was not around, was not in the political scene? Well, you know, you can understand I did not support him just because he's my father. I supported him because he had a clear cut understanding and uh, desire to reform Malaysia. And he was a symbol of the persecution that helped galvanize the movement. Now, we must remember one clear issue. He was a firm advocate of a multiracial political party. He ensured that we all worked towards it. He took risks to introduce needs-based affirmative action economic program mm -hmm. versus race-based um, status quo at the time. And I think these are crucial, courageous acts mm -hmm. that defined the narrative that we're enjoying today. Yeah. Um, I am forever thankful for that because he really helped forge the strength for us to remain true to our principal convictions even though there are moments where it was very difficult on us as a family, as a party. Yeah. So, I mean, it was very life-changing and uh, I pray that we will always be able to harness that energy and the ideas because Governing is one issue, but the important bit is providing the idea yeah. for a better future. Everyone pays a price for the choices they make in life. Everyone goes through severe challenges one way or the other. So for me, certainly nothing comes free. Yeah. You have to go through um, some degree of difficulty. And uh, it was those years of frequenting prison through and through and understanding that when democratic institutions are abused right in front of your very eyes, then you have to take action and to confront fear. But I am always cognizant of how lucky I am because for us, the daughters and son of a political prisoner, we have relatively enjoyed public support. There are many others who have been forgotten so it's important to keep on the agenda because we mustn't rest on our laurels and we mustn't think it's only about you. Yeah. It's actually never about you. It's about what you can offer to, to the, the movement or to the country. Yeah, that's, that's it really. And I think that degree of relativity of how you can assist but also be assisted by others and how you can present change by being true to yourself and by the, you know, at the same time are important lessons in life. All right. Thank you very much, YB. Thank yeah, thank you.